Let us now take the fifth example from model 1 of data sufficiency where we are going to discuss a question based on blood relations. This example that we are going to discuss here is important because generally most of the students go wrong in these type of data sufficiency questions. So let's see what is the question here and how to solve that. The question here is, is Karina the wife of Seth? As you can see here, the question starts with the word is. Is Karina the wife of Seth? Now you know that the answer here can be yes or no. That means if Karina is the wife of Seth, the answer should be yes. Otherwise, the answer here will be no. So this is like a yes or no question where our answer will be yes or no depending on the given question. So here we need to decide is the answer yes or no from the given statements. Now statement 1 says Karina is a female person and Seth is a male person. So here the gender of the two persons have been mentioned. Karina is a female person and Seth is a male person. Now just because Karina is a female person and Seth is a male person doesn't mean that they are husband and wife. So we cannot say that Karina is the wife of Seth from statement 1. That means we are not sure whether she is the wife of Seth or not. That means statement 1 is insufficient to answer the question. Why? Because we are not able to decide what is the relationship between Karina and Seth only from the given genders. So statement 1 cannot give us the answer by using it alone. Let us now look at statement 2. Statement 2 says Karina is the daughter of Seth. Now very clearly straightforward statement 2 mentions that Karina is the daughter of Seth. Now if Karina is the daughter of Seth, she cannot be the wife of Seth. That means from statement 2, we know the relationship between Karina and Seth. They are father and daughter. That means Karina is the daughter of Seth or Seth is the father of Karina. That means very clearly, is Karina the wife of Seth? For this question, the answer should be no. Why? Because Karina is the daughter of Seth. And this we are able to say from statement 2 alone. Now the point to be understood here is because the answer for the given question is no doesn't mean that the question cannot be answered. This is where students go wrong. They mark the answer as option number 4. That means both statements 1 and 2 together cannot give us the answer because we are getting the answer as no. Remember friends, we are able to get the answer for this question. The answer may be no or yes. That's a different story. But we are able to say that Karina is the wife of Seth is a wrong statement. That means the answer is no. And that we are able to say from statement number 2 alone. That means statement 2 alone is sufficient to answer the question. So here the answer has to be option 2. That is statement 2 alone is sufficient to answer the question. So be careful. Wherever for these type of questions when we get the answer as no, doesn't mean that answer cannot be determined even if we combine both the statements. We are, we are able to say no from statement 2. So answer has to be only 2 is sufficient. Similarly, if we are able to say the answer is no by combining both the statements together, then we should say that both the statements together are sufficient to answer the question. So the important point to be understood here is if the answer is no, doesn't mean that the question cannot be answered. No itself is the answer for the given question. And that we are able to say from statement 2. So be careful in these type of questions. That is questions which start with ease. Or questions where the answer is yes, no, true, false. For example, let's say for a given question, the answer is false. It is like a true, false statement where the answer is false. Now, just because the answer is false doesn't mean that question cannot be answered. The question has been answered and we are able to say that it is false. And depending on which of the statements give us the answer as false, we have to mark the answer.